Today, Americans are more dependent than ever on minerals and fossil fuels found on national forest and grasslands. At the same time, the public has never been more concerned about the impact of mineral extraction from public lands. Through cooperation and partnerships with industry, minerals can be removed in harmony with other natural resources, values, and uses. To help people understand how these partnerships work, the concept of mineral showcasing has been developed. Mineral showcase areas are success stories that demonstrate how mineral operations can work in harmony with other forest uses to reduce environmental concerns. The Independence Mining Company's Big Springs Gold Mine in northern Nevada was designed with help from the Forest Service to minimize environmental impacts. Through careful planning, design, and personal commitment, the Big Springs project became the first hard rock mining showcase in the national forest system. Public input received during project scoping revealed concern at the site for scenic beauty, rangelands, recreation, and wildlife. The greatest concern was for water quality and the Lahontan cutthroat trout. The trout is listed as threatened under the Threatened and Endangered Species Act. To protect the trout and preserve water quality, a number of steps were taken. Eroding portions of the Humboldt River stream bank were stabilized with selected waste rock. To promote willow and other streamside vegetation, a portion of North Fork Canyon was fenced to keep domestic livestock out. To prevent mine area sediment from entering the creek, sediment catching ponds were built below mine roads. There, heavier sediment settles, while finer material is strained through straw bales and filter cloth. The mine company worked closely with Forest Service engineers to locate the Hall Road further from the stream than the existing county road, and portions of the old road were reclaimed. Private and mining vehicles now share the Hall Road, which will stay open for public access after mining operations are complete. Since this is a popular area for hunting, mine activity is reduced during deer season. By designing the Hall Road for highway-sized trucks rather than more economical super-sized haul trucks, a narrower road could be used. That has meant less road surface as a sediment source. Water quality and quantity, along with fish surveys on the North Fork of the Humboldt River, are recorded monthly from several stream locations. So far, fish populations are at a record high level. To further control erosion, the cut and fill haul road slopes are hydro mulched and seeded to quickly establish vegetation. After mining and reclamation, the North Fork Humboldt River fishery and that area's watershed should be in as good or better condition than it was before mining. This mine should serve as an example, not only for other mines of the same company, but other mines in Nevada as to what should be done and what sets a standard for reclamation in Nevada and indeed uh, for all hard rock mining in the West. The Uinta Mountains in northeast Utah and southwest Wyoming truly offer something for everyone. Buried beneath the sloping layers of rock on the north slope of the Uintas lies the resource that fuels modern life oil and gas. Oil and gas operators in the area have entered into a partnership with the Forest Service to showcase their operations. It's called the Wasatch Cash Petroleum Showcase. In several instances, the sites originally chosen for drill pads have been moved to protect vital resources. Fisheries are protected to prevent soil erosion and to ensure the safety of sensitive species like the Colorado River cutthroat trout. Habitat for protected raptors, such as red-tailed hawks and golden eagles, are also protected. 
extraordinary efforts are made to protect the Uinta green thread, a sensitive plant found nowhere in the world except the Uintas. Anadarko Oil Company moved a proposed drilling site five times to assure the plant's safety. Oil and gas operations are located where they use natural mountain contours and reduce stream crossings. Roads are designed and constructed to have minimum impact on wildlife, vegetation, watershed, and natural terrain. It's what you don't see in this picture that counts. The oil developments are mostly screened from view by natural cover and terrain. Facilities are painted with colors that harmonize with the landscape. After a well is played out, it's plugged, and the petroleum company is responsible for reclamation. Other benefits have included new trailheads and wildlife winter range improvements. Southeast Idaho's highlands provide a climate and scenery that makes it valuable for recreation, wildlife, livestock, forestry, and mining. The most valuable economic resource found here is a plain brown rock called phosphate. It's the basis for the largest industry in southeast Idaho and provides many products Americans depend on. For example, the bubbles in your soft drink, the picture on your television, and the spring in your phone cord. Without phosphate, your car tires would be hard and brittle. It's also used to preserve food, get clothes cleaner, and light up your life. Most significantly, it's processed into agricultural fertilizer that's made America the world leader in food production. Phosphate mining provides tremendous economic benefits. And thanks to a partnership between mining companies and administering agencies, it's meant state and national recognition for outstanding cooperation and reclamation efforts. It's this type of cooperation that has made phosphate mining a mineral showcase. Phosphate deposits typically lie in long, narrow strips within several hundred feet of the surface. To expose the mineral, overburden is stripped away and placed nearby for use as backfill and reclamation. Sometimes, 10 tons of overburden must be removed for every ton of ore produced. To reduce environmental impacts, a variety of methods are used to transport ore from mine to processing plant. At some mines, railroads are constructed. In mountainous terrain, covered conveyors are used, eliminating dust and erosion. Paved haul roads in other areas eliminate dust and protect the water supply. In remote locations, the ore is pumped as a slurry through underground pipelines. Water used in processing is recycled, and the atmosphere is protected by high-tech scrubbers that reduce plant stack emissions. Reclamation is a tough job in Idaho's arid highlands, but by combining expertise, mining companies and government agencies have developed new ways to solve unique problems. Research done by the Forest Service has led to new seed mixtures for the harsh environment. It's also been discovered that some subsurface materials work well as a topsoil substitute when combined with certain fertilizers. Large overburdened dumps are reshaped to gentler slopes and covered with the topsoil material that grow vegetation. Backfilling, recontouring, and seeding are part of everyday operations at the mine. In the mid-1970s, the mining companies, along with Idaho Fish and Game, studied the effects of phosphate mining on deer and elk herds in the area. The study showed no effects on migratory patterns, and big game numbers are actually increasing in the mining area. Thanks to sincere commitment, the industry agency partnership in southeast Idaho will continue to work for the economy, and the environment as a mineral showcase. Most forest visitors and wildlife are unaware of the furious activity taking place just beneath their feet, 
where coal, one of the country's most important energy resources, is being hurried from its ancient resting place. Coal currently provides approximately one-third of our total national energy needs, primarily by fueling coal-fired electric power plants. Those plants supply 60% of America's electric energy. In the state of Utah, coal is produced almost exclusively from underground mines. Coal companies and land administering agencies have joined together to extract the coal in a manner that is environmentally acceptable. A large portion of lands being coal mined in Utah are national forest lands that produce a variety of critical resources. As mines are developed, special measures are taken to reduce impacts on other resources. These measures include salvaging topsoil for reclamation, construction of sediment control facilities, and taking special measures to protect wildlife. The methods of mining are determined by coal occurrence, geologic, economic, and environmental factors. Utah coal is found in near horizontal seams within rock layers. Tunnels are driven into the coal seams to provide access to the coal reserves. Entries can extend laterally several miles into the mountains and plateaus. With this type of mining, less than 1% of the mined area is disturbed for the construction of surface and transportation facilities. When the coal is mined out, the mining company is responsible for returning the disturbed area to the pre-mining land use. The first step in reclamation is to remove all of the underground mining equipment. All mine openings are plugged and sealed. Then all mining related surface facilities such as buildings, conveyor belts, storage silos and roads are removed. State and federal lands are returned to approximate pre-mining contours and covered with fertile topsoil. Contaminated wastes and soil materials are treated or hauled to an approved disposal facility. Earth materials that are not conducive to plant growth are strategically buried. All drainages are restored and erosion control structures installed. The last stage of reclamation is to revegetate the disturbed area with plant species compatible with the surrounding environment. The operator is responsible for monitoring the success of reclamation in conjunction with the regulatory agencies. Once reclamation is complete, little evidence remains of the mining operation. The development of partnerships between coal operators, other land users, surface management agencies, and regulatory agencies have resulted in maximizing coal recovery with very little disruption or impact to other resources. These cooperative efforts have meant energy for Americans and jobs for Utahns. It's this kind of spirit of caring for the land and serving people that makes central Utah coal mining a mineral showcase. Showcasing is a great way to get things done right the first time. It provides an excellent opportunity to show the public that mineral activities can be conducted on forest land in harmony with other resources. Companies interested in setting up and implementing a showcasing effort should contact an office of the USDA Forest Service for a copy of Guide to Showcasing Mineral Activities publication FS 440.